All right, so first I wanna say there will be two parts to this video. The first part will be quite short and the second part will be lengthy. What I'm gonna do is evaluate and talk at length about Kyle Fuller's play in 2021. I'm not necessarily gonna focus on stats and performance from 2017 to 2019. I know that may, that may not be the player that we're actually getting, but I think that all really depends on, on what he's asked to do. Um, I'm not incredibly familiar with the Broncos' defensive schemes from last year. I know, you know, a lot of people. A lot of people have some great things to say about Vic Fangio. Um, I am aware that they were top top five or actually top three in the league in points allowed per game. Maybe even number two behind the Bills. I know we went in there in Week Four and beat them twenty three to seven. And I thought their defense played well, but I thought they had a couple of cuff, uh, coverage situations that were not coordinated well. So what I did for this film study. Grab a few plays of Fuller, who is now 30 years old, uh, playing in the slot for the Broncos against the Eagles. Playing as a nickel defensive back, basically. We have four of those plays. And then we'll focus on his game against the Ravens from week four. Now, he's typically, if you look at this screen here, you, he's typically been a left corner um, in his last three years with the Bears, or at least according to, to this statistical you know, breakdown that I have here. And then last year played some slot corner and then played some left side corner for the Broncos defense when they had some injuries. You can see that just the, the high accolades from 2017 to 19. The stats show a really active football player against the pass, someone who had 12 interceptions over that uh, 48 game stretch, I believe. He's just not matched that production uh, last year with the Broncos um, and even the year before with the Bears, 2020. His snap count decreased significantly last year. Typically with the Bears, you see it was above 95% of the team's defensive snaps. And then in 2021, he was only on the field for 71% of the Broncos' defensive snaps. I think it was like 720 plays total. I think the salary that he was given by the Ravens is important because although I do think he's a useful piece, he's very smart, willing to tackle. He's still got some burst, if you ask me. And he's seen a lot of football plays, so he'll fit in with our veteran secondary and be able to communicate things and adjust on the fly. I would not want to allot uh, so much money to him that we can't pursue other guys at either wide receiver or outside linebacker. Personally, I believe we're set at outside linebacker for two or three more years with Ojabo, Bowser, and, and also um, Owe. And we don't need to address that position. But even still, it wouldn't be a bad idea to get a guy like Justin Houston with the injury issues we have at outside linebacker and all three guys. And I hope that we didn't dedicate too much money toward Fuller. I suspect that we did not, simply because his salary has not been announced. Anyway, let's look at, take a look at the film so you guys can see the difference in how comfortable he looks at outside corner versus nickel. This first play, uh, he's the nickel, right? He's down here. and He's in the slot. He's going to blitz off the edge and get a free run at the running back. I think the running back is um, Miles Sanders. And the Eagles run. Look, the Eagles had a great running game last year, right? And the Eagles running backs run hard. They get they run downhill. They get square to the line of scrimmage, and they run through contact. From the end zone angle, you'll see that Fuller has a great opportunity. He's off screen here to the right. He's got a great opportunity to make a play. He's just unable to complete it. He's in position. You know, the ability is there, the opportunity is there for him. Second play, he's in the he's in the nickel again. He's rolled up um, to trips. There's three receivers here for the Eagles. And the Eagles fake a bubble by the number three guy, which is one of their, you know, the mainstays of their offense is a bubble. Fuller has to respect it, but he's got his eyes in the backfield, which is typical for him. He does a great job of keeping low beams over here and high beams in the backfield, or or you can say it the other way if you wish. But in any case, he can see that the ball's been handed off, and he bursts in there to try to get involved in the tackle. He does show a better burst than number 22, Jackson, the safety here, and he shows a willingness to get involved against the run. If you ask me, um, he's not just content with being in the screen. Right, the third play, this is where we're going to start to talk about instincts and some things that probably Ravens fans, to be honest with you, uh, may not like. And what I mean is, first of all, I think he's a very smart football player. I think he seems to communicate pre- and post-snap. I think he recognizes routes. He tries to play on the leverage side that the coverage calls for. I think his instincts, however, are as an outside corner. So what I mean is this. 
you see this play develops. A unique protection scheme. You got the right tackle and this receiver that I believe Fuller was assigned to block or to guard. Uh, they're protecting, and Hertz gets too much time, too much space. Fuller could definitely attack here, but what's his instinct? He's 30 years old. What's he done in the NFL pretty much his whole career? He's covered people. Why isn't he why isn't he attacking? Why isn't he moving toward Hertz to put some pressure on him? Because he's worried that this guy right here who he's assigned to block is going to slip out late and he's going to attack the quarterback and then he's going to leave a wide open receiver. That's what he, that's what his instincts tell him to do. That's what his instincts are as a football player in 2022. We'll get the um all 22 angle here in a moment. There's Fuller at the top. Look, he could definitely attack. You know, like I said, this is going to show you how much time Hertz has, how creative the play is, how isolated, uh, I think it's Patrick Sertain, is up there with Devontae Smith. Now, the one thing I don't like, and this is not from a Fuller standpoint, it's from a scheme standpoint. hope we don't do this with him. This is the type of stuff that Wink Martindale would do. Put a DB up near to the line of scrimmage, and then the guy who's supposed to guard would just pass pro. We would leave DBs, corners, or safeties one-on-one. -on -one. You know, this is a nice design on the play by the Eagles, if you ask me. All right, this one's going to alarm you even more because this is about Fuller. This is the worst play that I've seen him be involved in. He's in the slot. Broncos are playing cover zero down here in the red zone. Fuller is assigned to guard the point man, which is Devontae Smith. Smith beats him easily over the middle. And my concern with this is that Fuller does not appear as smooth or instinctive in the slot at all. This play kind of shows me that, that his instincts are just... These last two plays show, if you ask me, his instincts are just not to be in the slot. I think he's better as an outside corner. Do I think that this play is indicative of what we're going to get from Kyle Fuller right now? No. I'm openly telling you up front, this is the worst play that I've seen from him. I think he can play, and I intend to show you that. I am concerned that he either looks slow here, or that he already recognizes he's beat and he's not running at 100% speed. Now, is he going to make up that deficit down here in the red zone to Devontae Smith? No, he's not. But we like to see players giving high effort in Baltimore. I'm not saying there is low effort there. I'm saying I did not see evidence of incredibly high effort. All right, let's look at where he is solid, playing on the left side of the defense. And we're and this all this film here throughout, here to the end, is going to be of him playing in week four, left side corner, against the Ravens. So we all saw this game, being as we're Ravens fans. I would say he's pretty solid in zone. He's very aware, has the speed, agility to play multiple coverages. I like him more in off coverage, like you see here. He played, I think he played 100% of the defensive snaps that day and displayed his skills well. He didn't make any plays on the ball, though. And that's the ability, you know, from looking at the stats of his career with the Bears, that's what we would like to have, right? That's the guy we would like to have. Anyway, he's playing off man here. He knows the blitz called. Should get to Lamar before any double moves or like a stop and go to develop. So you can see there's pressure. He's looking in the backfield already. And he's trying to time it up if Lamar throws the stop. Unfortunately, Lamar is just different. You know, there is pressure, and you'll see it from the end zone angle. Lamar is able to stay in the pocket and elevate a little bit. Now, you know, Fuller's off screen, so you're not going to see him again. But they're bringing, what is this, five-man pressure, right? One, two, three, four, five. So Fuller, the reason why he jumped that that little, or he stayed on top of that out and was ready to jump it, so he thought that the pressure would get there. This, to me, is an underrated play by Lamar against pressure. But going back to Fuller from the All-22, I think this shows his awareness. He knows the pressure scheme. So he knows, I can sit off of here, provide some depth. Provide some some space here and let the quarterback maybe throw the football out here and then jump it. I think that's what he's trying to do. And now you'll see the receiver and him have switched positions. You know, and theoretically, yes, the receiver got behind him. Hopefully I illustrated my point there. All right. Here he's going to be guarding Duvernay on a vertical route. The safety to his side is uh, Simmons. Good player. Young player. He's going to take the over route by Andrews. There's the route that Duvernay is going to run. And Simmons is going to make a nice play on this. Fuller has what I would say is enough speed to stay with these guys on verticals. You can see that he's running on top of Duvernay. I think he's in good position. 
Duvernay is quite fast enough, even though his route here, it, it, there's no shake or change of, of, of speed to, you know, gear Fuller down and then try to burst past him, right? All right, here's a third down situation. Fuller is once again staying on top of this route by Brown. He does a nice job of playing outside leverage and, and being able to be outside, slightly outside leverage on the receiver and then also keep his eyes in the backfield. He's very good at that. You can see here he's, he's kind of opening and then getting depth, staying on top of the route. Brown does end up blocking Fuller when Lamar breaks contain. If you recall, there was a lot of pressure on Lamar this game. And F look, Fuller was not super physical here with this block by Brown. If you're going to be picky, you're going to say like, hey, man, we want you to dominate this guy you know, in, in this situation right now. And he seemed content to just you know, let Lamar get tackled by someone else. Later on, Fuller's going to be real physical with Brown. And basically slam him to the ground on a tackle. So it kind of goes both ways. All right, here he's on the left side of the defense again. And we have a pistol option play to the offense's right. Fuller's able to recognize it because he's always looking in the backfield, all right, regardless of whether he's supposed to be or not. And he gets outside the block of Prochet and becomes the secondary force player. Now, I don't think he actually hits Lamar. That's what it's like to deal with Lamar Jackson in space, right? You can damn near, you can't even touch him when he's up against the sideline. Uh, there's Fuller on the left-hand side, by the way. But Fuller at least makes him jump to avoid the contact. So he, here you can see he's getting his outside arm free. He's framing up Prochet because he's the secondary force player. Someone else was the primary force player. So he does his job in, in terms of maintaining outside leverage. And, and again, I don't even know that he touches Lamar. That's how special that guy is. The hardest hit Lamar took on that play was slamming into the turf, right? All right, Fuller's going to zone this off, and we're going to start to talk about some interesting and, and somewhat weird things that the Broncos did in this game. Andrews is going to run the over route here, I believe. And Fuller's going to zone off and take the post-climb route by DuVernay from the other side. So Simmons is following Andrews, who was the number one receiver, lined up the Fuller side. Fuller is taking the, the climb route by DuVernay, so they're taking that away. And you can see that this time, Andrews beats him cleanly. Fuller's really good at keeping his eyes in the backfield, like I said. And I think pre-snap communication, he too, from what I perceive in this game, and hopefully this is the type of thing you guys, you guys want to know, I think he's the first person to communicate among this group, right? I think this guy and this guy are very young, still trying to get acclimated. I think this is a veteran. Jackson, I forget his first name. I don't want to say it wrong. I think I know it, but he's a very good player. And I think the same thing of Fuller. Fuller is usually the first guy to communicate. You ask me. Simmons is very focused on the backfield here and pays zero attention to this vertical route by Andrews. None. In fact, Andrews runs right by him. <clears throat> and, you know, if you ask me at this point, Fuller is looking for Simmons. He's expecting help. I don't think these two guys were on the same page for parts of this game. And look, I understand the Broncos defense, like I said, was like number two or three in points allowed per game. So I'm kind of like attacking a walled city because they were very good. I understand that. But I'm just take, saying there were coverage issues whereby certain DBs were playing one coverage and certain guys were doing the other thing. You can let me know what you think you see here yourself. To me, it looks like Fuller expects help. Doesn't get it, and then tries to recover. Of course, there is an opportunity here for Andrews to get the football. I understand that there was separation. I think there was a slight miscommunication there, and I can't prove it. All right, here is an example of the Broncos switching the read up this time, and Fuller being, I would say, adaptable and multiple and doing his job. So what I said before was when... Um, Andrews would run the over. The safety Simmons would take him, right? Two plays ago. And Fuller would zone off. You remember he took that post or climb route by DuVernay, right? They're going to switch it this time. Andrews is going to cut over the middle on the over route. And Fuller is going to be the guy who follows. You can see him here in between the hashes. This looks like it could be cover three. I think this guy makes a mistake. We'll run it back here and let you see it. But in any case, it's a completion to Andrews down on the boundary. That's the player, the aforementioned player, who I think 
uh, carried a vertical route too far. Andrews fits in the open space between these two defenders. I think that that guy who I've spot shadowed should have been somewhere in this area. Anyway, I think there's a blown coverage there. If you don't believe me, that's okay. I'm going to rewind it and let you see the depth of the free safety. We're going to start from the back end. Hopefully I explained it well to you guys in terms of the switching. Simmons is going to zone off here. Uh, Fuller is going to follow Andrews to the over route and then sit in the middle of the field. I think they're trying to bait Lamar to throw an interception. I think that's what they're doing. They have been running Simmons with the over route. And I think what they're trying to do is have Fuller follow him and sit and then let Lamar throw it to a player down here who unfortunately carries a vertical too far. So we're going to let this run and we'll start on the back end. I'm going to try to explain to you that I think this should be cover three. All right, so this is a free safety. He's your middle of the field player. Simmons is a deep third player and you got a deep third player here. You're supposed to have four underneath droppers if it's cover three, something like this. Draw a little semicircle or whatever. And you got three. You got a, one guy here, you got one here, a third one here, who is expanding. And then I, th I believe this guy carried this route too far and should be in between these two players here. I think they were trying to bait Lamar into throwing an interception by playing cover three, which they had not played a lot of to this point. We'll get the end zone angle, and I'll try to explain it from the... I, I just tried to explain... Anyway, look at this guy. Again, you saw a moment ago putting his arms up in the air like, what's going on? He's looking at someone. Fuller seems unconcerned. There's a little bit of a disconnect here between Fuller and the team, at least in terms of communication. I don't I don't know who he's looking at, who he's signaling to. You would suspect that it has to be you know one of the safeties, right? Let's watch the end zone angle. And again, if it's cover three, you got to have a four-man rush, four underneath droppers, and then a three-deep shell. Here's your four rushers. There's wide open space between two defenders, and this guy looks like he's trying to recover to me. I think he carried this vertical too far, and they got caught. I would offer to you that eventually what they did in this game, and again, Fuller and this guy, just there's no communication here post-snap. None. None. He's looking at someone and then eventually giving the thumbs up. I don't know what that's about. In any case, I think they were trying to be multiple coverage-wise, and eventually they gave up for two reasons. One, when they went cover zero, they were getting pressure on Lamar, right? And we all know that. This was the first week where that really kind of came up in mass. And two, they, their young guys, specifically Simmons and Sertain, were struggling to be multiple in certain coverages. I don't think the problem was Fuller being multiple in those coverages. All right, let's move on. They had trouble with our snag RPO concept. Not that the run game was hitting because it was not, but the safety corner relationship was not coordinated to the side of the of the inside linebacker. Now, Fuller and Simmons do combine for a tackle here, limiting Brown for like four yards. But coverage-wise, they're just not on the same page, if you ask me. what what you One of the options you would do is you would sky it. So the safety spin down, him roll back to cover three, roll back to cover three, Roll back to cover three. A lot of drawing there. My apologies. You could do it the other way. Corner could sit. You know, you could you could cloud it. You could roll to cover three there. You could stay in your two shell. This guy could go forward. That's not what Fuller does, though. Fuller backs off. Simmons is oblivious to this route. Again, Simmons is just looking in the backfield. That's it. I like Fuller's discipline. I like that he stays on the outside here. I think this snag route is, is possibly something that could have been. Actually, we did hit the snag route twice in this game, once to Watkins and once, I believe, to Prochet. I don't think I showed that play in this video. But in any case, Fuller stays outside, and I'm, you're going to get a, a play to the opposite side, and you're going to see the difference with Sertain. Same concept, RPO snag, right? Same routes. Brown in motion. Watkins running the snag concept. Fuller's down here. I'm not trying to run down Patrick Sertain. We did attack him in this game. I think Sertain, yes, he won the job over Fuller in the 2021 season, like before the season began. Got it. Fine. Understood. What I'm trying to do is say to you, I suspect that some of the poor ratings that Fuller had in terms of coverage in 2021 was due to some issues that I'm trying to illustrate here. Now, he is the first guy to communicate here. No one else has communicated anything about this motion. Simmons has now caught on and tried to communicate something. Not much effort at communication going here with this defense, with these DBs, if you ask me. 
Sertain does not stay on the outside nearly as much as Fuller did. Now he's got the sideline as a defender, and it's only like a six-yard gain. Sertain, the OLB, and the and the safety, which again I think is Jackson, they combined to tackle Marquis Brown for a six-yard gain. So so I get it. But the RPO is being used as a substitute here for the run game because we weren't getting the run game going that 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 much, if you ask me. I offer to you that um if, uh, by the way, I don't think this is very well coordinated. They're forcing a, a keep read. Uh, excuse me. This is a, a muddy read for Lamar. Okay. This is a muddy read for Lamar. This guy widens up. So him widening could be a give read. Then he sits square and Lamar throws it out to Marquise Brown. To me, that could have very well been a give read. If it's a give read, I don't know. I don't know why Sertain is going with the snag. The ball is not going to be given. The ball is not going to be kept anyway. Sertain's going with the snag. He does have the sideline as an extra defender, and he is involved with the tackle. It's not a horrible play by him. I'm illustrating to you that I think Fuller played it better than than Sertain did on the other side. All right, next play. Fuller is clearly trying to communicate something to Simmons, and he points him across here. Simmons. Ends up pointing to the middle of the field. There's an over route. There's an under route that Simmons chases from the near side, which is by the number one receiver, I think Watkins. And so Fuller is going to zone off, like I described to you earlier, right? Simmons goes with Watkins, completely oblivious to the to the over route hitting over the top. This is bait, is what this is, right? And Fuller almost makes a great play on this. This is a sick throw by Lamar. Sick throw. He pump fakes to the far side. Get a better view of it from the end zone angle. You'll see Simmons Simmons is chasing this route here. Fine, that's their coverage. Okay, cool. But he's oblivious to the over route. Con the veteran players will understand. Where there's an under, there's an over. Sick throw. Nearly a great play by Fuller. Awesome job by Marquise Brown to catch the football You know while he had... Potential contact. All right, the last three plays, we'll wrap this up, will be three examples of the Broncos bringing heavy pressure. You can see everybody lined up near the line of scrimmage. And Fuller being asked to play man, typically off man like you see here. I think he can help our defense. I think he can be a very big help in getting things aligned and getting the right coverage for the situation. Something did seem off with his, his situation with the Broncos. I know his coverage was not rated nearly as high. You know, is it possible that was due to the system? Yeah, it's possible, but Fangio and them had a good year defensively. So, you know, take it for what it is. Is it possible there's reduced athleticism with Fuller? And he just can't be that guy that he was from 2017, 2019 anymore? Sure, it's possible. What I suspect and what I think we're going to get is something in between. I think we're going to get something in between out of Paul Fuller. I think, I think we're going to get a good player, a veteran player, smart. Someone who, if we put him in the right position, the right situation, again, I've watched three games, I think the right position for him is outside corner. I don't think he looks as comfortable at slot corner or nickel, nickel DB. I think we have a smart veteran who won't give up big plays. He'll let us be multiple. Do I suspect that he's going to you know, give us four or five interceptions like he did some of those seasons for the Bears? In one year, I think he gave them 12, I'm sorry, sorry, seven interceptions and 22 passes defended in the same season. No, we're not going to get anything like that, obviously. He's probably going to play around 70% of the snaps, maybe a little bit less, depending on Marcus Peters' health and, and Marlon Humphrey's health. I think we got a good player. Is he cornerback number three? I don't know, man. I don't subscribe to that stuff. There's going to be situations where he's going to play outside corner because that's what he's better at doing. When you have him and Peters and Marlon Humphrey healthy, how do they fit together? I'm not sure. But we certainly have a whole hell of a lot of options. Brandon Stevens, Chuck Clark. Now this guy added to the mix. I love what we have done. I, I hope you appreciated this video. If you did, please let me know in the comment section. This one was pretty in-depth. It took me a long time to produce. That's why I'm publishing it late at night. I tried to package these plays in a progression so you could see what I thought were small breakdowns in the Broncos' coverage. Uh, not to absolve Fuller of his, quote, bad season, because I know he supposedly gave up five or six touchdowns and was pretty poorly rated by PFF, but I, I didn't look that up. I just saw those quotes on Twitter. Let me know what you think of Fuller and his ability to help this defense based on the video that I've shown. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel or support me on Patreon if you'd like you know, to help me create more content like this every week. Thank you guys for checking out the video. I look forward to your comments.